welcome back to our YouTube channel. Yes. So today we're going to do a very short but informative video about how we got pregnant on our first try. Yes. Um, we just wanted to come on here and kind of share our journey and our experience with you guys. I am currently four months pregnant and we inseminated back in November. Mm -hmm. So, So we're going to go over how we even got started, what was that process like, and try to be informative for y'all today. So first we're gonna start off with the sperm bank, that whole process, finding mm -hmm. the sperm bank. Yeah, so we did, ended up doing like a lot of research on like several different sperm banks and just narrowing down which one we wanted the most. So we ended up doing a lot of research on several different sperm banks and we found one that we really liked and we ended up calling in and getting like a lot more information about the process and how it would work with us inseminating at home and the representative was actually really helpful so i would just say make sure whichever sperm bank you guys go with that you call and ask any questions that you may have so that way they can help walk you through the process Yes, so after we found our sperm bank, that's when me and we talked to the representatives, we knew that that was our particular bank. That is when we really honed in on finding the donor. Mm -hmm. And so me and her spent a lot of time just one-on-one -on -one searching through the website and that is how we ended up finding the particular donor that we chose. Right. So then after we did all of the paperwork and everything, we were able to set a delivery date of when we wanted to get our sperm delivered. Mm -hmm. um, our sperm was delivered in one of those cryobank um, tanks. Yeah. So we had it delivered a f like a day or two before I was actually supposed to ovulate. Mm -hmm. And then that way we would have at least like a five to seven day window for us to actually inseminate. Yes. So that was very important, um, which is kind of like our next topic, the ovulation or tracking ovulation. Yes. So uh, tracking the ovulation, honestly, that's the most important part. Of course, you want to find the way that you're going to try to get pregnant. And you also want to find like whatever avenue as far as a sperm bank or actually a known donor, whatever it is to get pregnant. But the tracking of the ovulation is definitely priority when it comes to this process. Mm -hmm. So for us, we use so many different ovulation kits. Um, I forgot like the acronym for it. I think it's OPTs or ovulation predictor kits, something like that. O OPK. <laughs> OPK. Yeah. There you go. So ovulation predictor kits, which is similar to what we like everything we have right now is what we actually use during our process yeah so this is the one from dollar tree yes your local dollar tree does carry these ovulation kits and this actually works mm -hmm. so we use these a lot and this is how it looks um as y'all can see we kind of dated them and everything and if we did morning or night we would put like a.m p.m but we were like on it when it came to tracking yeah uh i forgot what kind this is this one is the clear blue so okay these ones were the ones that came in the clear blue opk oh, yes, and it comes with this reader and then you have you're to actually put in these yeah. inside of here okay. and then you'll be able to read whether or not you're ovulating whether you're at high peak low peak no peak um and so then it t it'll tell you like which one you are um, based on the smiley face or if there's no smiley face at all. So it, it's really helpful because all the instructions are included, including with the Dollar Tree test. So just make sure that you guys are reading it. Um, it was a little confusing at first. Yeah. Reading them and the instructions are kind of different for these two, mm -hmm. but it's it's not bad once you've like done like the first one or two. Yeah. Um, tests. So we ended up doing them, I think the day, two days before I ovulated. Yep. And then um, the day, I ended up the being, day before you actually ovulated. Yeah, the day before I actually ovulated was the day that we actually inseminated yes. because that was when I was at my highest peak. And she ended up getting so. a smiley face, like kind of shown here. Yeah. So we were debating whether we should just wait until the following next day to like test again first. But 
don't know. I, another thing I would say, follow your intuition because mm -hmm. I just felt that we should do it right then and there, which was um, that evening we ended up testing and we got that smiley face. So I was like, let's just go for it. Like, let's yeah. just do it. And, and it. it'll tell you on the box or in the instructions too, like um, which one is the highest peak. Mm -hmm for your ovulation and so we chose to actually inseminate on the day that I it, I got the highest peak yeah. reading for this clear blue test that we had it actually stays on your um, reader mm -hmm. until I think like three months or, or, a, month, th or a month or something a like month that. or three months something like yeah. that it um, stays on there for a while so it, yeah basically once you get this smiley face which is the highest you don't need to use it again yeah it, it's gonna stay on there because you're like you're, you're at your highest peak, your highest peak yeah. so yeah so that one was really important i just made sure that i was tracking like i had already been tracking my period and mm -hmm. my ovulation um usually i was using flow but then i stopped using flow about what six months before i got we decided to get pregnant and yeah. I just started tracking it on my own like in my calendar on my phone I was making sure that I was tracking when I came on my period when my period stopped and then what day I was ovulating like yeah. what day I would be ovulating based on my cycle because my cycle would be anywhere between 27 to 28 days so yeah. just make sure that you're tracking your actual cycle period um, so that way you have like that range to go by as yeah. well. You'll know whether you're average or you're kind of abnormal with your cycle times and that could like be helpful when it comes to your due date later. Right. Um, so yeah, this was exciting, but also nerve wracking because it was our first time using the ovulation predictor kits. Yeah. But all in all, very helpful. Highly recommend. Yes. So we ovulated the day after we inseminated mm -hmm. so yeah all right so now we're going to cover the insemination the day of once we knew that we were at the most fertile peak yeah now it's time to go ahead and inseminate and we chose to do at home insemination and so we're gonna walk we're gonna walk y'all through that whole process yeah so initially when we got our tank from the cryo bank we ended up like going over the paperwork, making sure that we had the right sperm donor um, and everything matched with what our paperwork said. Mm -hmm. And then on the actual day of insemination, which was the day before I ovulated, we um, checked the sperm again just yep. to make sure we had the right sperm donor against the right paperwork, mm -hmm. all that logistic stuff. And then um, Babe ended up putting on gloves and goggles yeah and and I, I remember like we we read through the instructions mm -hmm. together um just thoroughly before we even began mm -hmm. um i think i had browsed through like some some videos of like prior at home inseminations from other couples just to get a little bit more uh because i'm a visual learner so just get a little bit more information on like okay this is exactly what i need to be doing um, I was nervous, but hey, we did it. <laughs> um, also, I would say uh, just for our experience, like we did pray beforehand mm -hmm. and we just made sure. Um, I know I was very adamant about like her just being relaxed. Um, like I think our energy being right was like very important. Yeah. And I think we did a great job of like focusing on that and trying to just stay calm stay stay relaxed yeah. yeah um and so when it actually came down to the insemination process we had to make sure that we followed the instructions thawing out the sperm mm -hmm. um making sure that she had her protective gear on while she was taking out the sperm mm -hmm. um so that it could thaw um and then after that we ended up drawing it up into a syringe. syringe and they actually provided the syringe as well yeah. Um, with the sperm bank that we used. Um, and then we made sure to use some pre-seed. So about 15 minutes, mm -hmm. we, I think we did ours for 15 minutes. Um, we actually used the pre-seed, which comes, they have several that come in here. Yeah. Um, it's like a little syringe, specialized syringe where yes. you can 
pull out of this tube and uh, they tell you step by step with the instructions like what you need to do and then this is the syringe that came with it it comes with several um so if you need to try again you do have like more syringes in here as well and this is the applicator that you'll use you'll just draw up the pre-seed in here to your desired amount um we did follow the instructions mm -hmm. and then we she inserted the pre-seed first yep. um i did lay on the bed with pillows underneath me yep. um and then had my feet like against the headboard so yeah um this is what the vial looks like for the sperm it's really small i think it only came with like a milliliter if that of sperm yeah it wasn't um, a lot in there yeah it wasn't a lot in there but obviously it doesn't take that much <laughs> because um, we i think it was, it was it was a lot of like actual you know sperm inside of that small amount mm -hmm. um i think it was like 60 million yeah 60 like million yeah but um yeah it doesn't take a lot um but yeah we kind of after we did the pre seed we let it kind of just set for some minutes that's when i kind of drew up the sperm with the syringe that they provided us and then inserted that right afterwards and made sure like it was all in there and good mm -hmm. and then uh the rest was just up to her body attempt number 2 no she I have to wait. Yay! Got it. <laughs> you got it, baby. Okay. So put that on. Oh, and it just said the lift don't twist. Oh my goodness. Okay. And this is the camera. is cold okay and the paper towel hold on let me get the other view keep it upright okay okay and i'll put this back in the thing oh, let me baby. hold this i need help okay something mm -hmm. okay so now we're gonna sit this over here and uh we gotta check the information mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and right. she basically just laid on the bed you can kind of explain that part yeah there. so after she inserted it i think we left it in there for like a few seconds like 10 yeah. seconds or so um and then she took their syringe out and then I sat with my legs elevated, like I said, on the headboard mm -hmm. with pillows underneath my bottom and my like waist area, hip area. Lower and, back. Yeah, lower back area. And then I laid there for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. After about 15 minutes, I flipped over from my back to my stomach. Mm -hmm. um, and then we sat there for another 15 minutes or so. And then I was so nervous, but I had to use the restroom afterwards. Yeah. But you, your sperm will be fine yeah. if you have to get up to use the restroom. Yeah. Um, some people do like to stay laying down for like an hour um, or more, but 30 minutes, I think our instructions specifically said 20 minutes. So like that, yeah. we did 30 minutes just to be on the safe side. And we ended up getting our first positive all right and so we ended up testing first off our two week wait was longer than two weeks it felt like yeah about a month no i'm just kidding it felt so long <laughs> we ended up testing on the 12th day post ovulation yeah. um and so we ended up testing on December 12th yep. and we got our first big fat positive, <laughs> which you guys would have seen if you guys watched our previous video of our pregnancy announcement. Yeah, it's all in there. Yeah. yeah. So we were screaming. We were very excited, very shocked and stuff. Um, yeah. And then we used several different tests. We used the clear blue 
um, pregnancy test. We had experience with clear blue from the ovulation prediction mm -hmm. kits, but we stuck with it on our pregnancy test. And then um, we also, just to be sure, went ahead and got some first response. Now we were like testing, we tested, we took two different tests the day that we decided to first test, right? And we got the, the uh, big fat positives, the pregnancy, we're pregnant. Mm -hmm. But then we also were like, okay, just to be sure, we need to test again tomorrow. And like, so we kept testing um, for the like next couple days. Oh, also. And we still were getting positives. Yeah, we also did use um, the Dollar Tree pregnancy test as well mm -hmm. on our first day of testing as well. So don't think that you have to get the clear blue first response. Um, we specifically wanted to make sure that we could get one that says pregnant on it. Yeah. But we also used the Dollar Tree test and it picked up that I was pregnant as well. Yep. So if y'all want to know a little bit more about our two week wait specifically from each other's point of view, then y'all can comment below and let us know. We'll definitely do a separate video to talk all about our experience. Like they mentioned, it felt so much longer than just two weeks. Yeah. So, I also um, filmed on my personal channel mm -hmm. my my experience with the two week wait. So if we can delve in on our channel about your experience, that would be cool too. Yeah, so, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I can let y'all know how it was like from the partner side of things. Yeah, from the outside looking in. Like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I think the last thing that we really want to touch on is um, I also was taking prenatals during our whole process of like filling out paperwork, researching and stuff. We have been planning this for quite a while, but um, I started taking prenatals three months mm -hmm. before we actually um, started our trying to conceive journey mm -hmm. or before we actually inseminated at home. So I use personally the innate um, baby and me multivitamin for my prenatals and I still currently use them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's what I use just to prep for being pregnant. Um, they say you can start using them what, up to six months, I think, or so before you start to get pregnant or trying to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. But I did three months and then um, I'm still taking the same prenatals. So yeah yeah all right well that's all that we have for y'all for our experience we hope that y'all enjoyed this video and we can't wait to show y'all more about our whole pregnancy journey as well as when baby is finally ready to get here so <laughs> just stay tuned because we have more exciting videos for y'all yeah so if you guys have any questions um, make sure you guys comment them down below and we'll be sure to answer them as best as we can. Um, just make sure that you guys are on the same page. Make sure you guys are doing your research. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching our video. Bye y'all. Bye. Bye.